an account of God's faithfulness. Uh, just the gratitude through these pages. Uh, someone has said that's the open door to God's presence. Gratitude yeah. is the open door to God's presence. I can see that. I can see that. That would be, and I think for David, you know, he would never have told you he was a, a I mean, sometimes as Christians, we kind of need to, we, we feel like we need to sort of present ourselves as, as these perfect people who are always happy and all that. And it's, and, and that's not at all, I mean, even Jesus was not always happy. He had, he lived his days and had very real emotions and, and, and every- Shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus, Jesus wept. wept. Right, yeah, yeah. And I think that, that um, he had, he had not, he had, you know, he knew he had messed up many times in his life. I mean, he was kind of a wild young man as a teenager and everything. And he just had this profound gratitude for the fact that God's arms were open wide when he came back and returned to him mm. and, and, uh, and wanted to live his life just walking with God. And uh, I think there was that gratitude. That was probably one of the most special characteristics he had because that was always there's so humor and his gratitude that, you know, I, God is, is given us what we need. And a passion to see others find God yes, for exactly. themselves. Exactly. You both so committed to that. Yes. It, it's almost, um, it, it's difficult, I'm sure, for some facing different kinds of hardships right now mm -hmm. to, to imagine that acceptance that you both had or quickly came to uh, for a journey that was going to be not just difficult, but end in death. Yes, yeah, he, he was not where, I was not where he was the first day. He was asking God, for God to be glorified, at least by the end of the day. I mean, the first part of the day we wept and, and we prayed and our family got together and we, we just sort of grieved um, I and mean, we continued grieving. But um, David, by the end of the day, was was just pretty much feeling confident that, okay, you know, we haven't walked out of God's will. We're still, you know, God is still the same person he was yesterday before I got ALS. Um, I was emotionally, it just was, I would just felt like I'd been hit over the head with a hammer. And, and so I thought of it later, David was praying for God's will. I was praying for healing. I guess is the way to sum up the first day. I, I didn't want anybody to pray for anything but healing. I mean, I just wanted my husband well and I, I wanted our, our lovely lives to remain the same. And, and I came to the point where David was. I mean, I never stopped praying for healing. I prayed for healing until, until the day David died. I mean, just, you know, God, this is my prayer. This is my petition. But I did come to the point um, after a while of just saying, I, but I know your will is what we really ultimately want. And I, I know we're, we're not even on this earth for that long. You know, I mean, this is, and, and what we do needs to be to God's glory. And, and, um, and, and I knew he would see us through and he would, he would remain the same. He would be the same when I was a widow as when I was a married person. He would be the same for David when he had ALS as when he didn't have ALS. Circumstances would change. Things would certainly not um, be easy, hmm. but he would be the same. You say what I learned about myself was revolutionary. Mm -hmm. What I learned about myself was revolutionary, yes. I, I just, um, I know that our earth, our earthly life is about, about God and what God wants us to do. Um, we get sidetracked so easily. Maybe it's because our lives, um, you know, we live in a free country. We, you know, so, so many things about our lives maybe are even a little on the easy side, you know? I mean, our challenges are we're raising kids and, you know, our teenager didn't come in on time last night and things like that. And we get sidetracked from, from what God has such huge purposes for his people and he wants wants every one of them to come to him and our lives are going to either speak that truth to people or not. And um, we don't want to waste time. We don't want to get up in the morning and just, you know, well, I dusted and I, you know, I, you know, had a nice dinner. And I mean, we really want to be out in the world um, and make our lives count for him. And, mm -hmm. and David, when he got sick, that was why he was going to go online and blog his, um, you know the the fact that he was how his ALS was going and and and, and he said but but God is doing such a, a big thing in this and so 
he just blogged that every week about how, what God was doing so other people could see that as well. May I read a little slice? Oh yes. I, I talked about the gratitude. Um, this is November 23rd, 2005. Uh, mechanics just left my house and I have a new electric stair lift. Now in addition to wheelchair races, I can offer my grandkids rides up and down the stairs. What am I learning? This Thursday is Thanksgiving. Traditionally, it is time for families to gather together, overeat, watch football, and thank God for all the blessings he has bestowed upon them. It is my favorite holiday. While it may involve endless dishwashing, it also involves endless eating and a huge overdose of football and family laughs. Unfortunately for many, the giving thanks part rarely takes the forefront. Over the years, when I have contemplated those things for which I am thankful, I'm often appalled by the shallowness of my response. I'm approaching Thanksgiving from a completely different perspective this year. As I've watched my body slowly dying, I've also watched my spirit slowly awakening. I'm learning that while I cannot breathe easily, I can thank God that I can breathe. While I can no longer walk, I can thank God that I can stand. While I can no longer run, my grandchildren love wheelchair racing. We can learn to thank God in our suffering. It's no wonder that many people look to this for encouragement. I'm sure on a daily basis, when it was online. Mm -hmm. We had almost 90,000 people log on. We had, um, David would go out um, when he was first sick and he would speak lots of places. When he couldn't get there just walking, he was taking his cane, then he took the walker, then he went in his wheelchair. And when things got worse, he we have a sunroom and he would sit in the sunroom and people would come and the door was like an open door. People would come, people would meet the Lord, people would, um, and, he, and he would just, um, you know, he would, he would just share his faith and yeah. And, and sharing, you two determined right at the beginning, and oh my, I hate to pretend that we do, in the face of difficult things, you determined to be barefaced honest yes. about the realities, about how you were feeling, about your fears. Yeah, we did. <laughs>